After our last FRS in the Snow video, so many of you had questions. When winter storms hit Utah once again, Todd just had to venture out to share more. So we've been having a bit of a snowmageddon here in uh, Utah. The challenge right now is that we've gotten feet of snow in the last few days and uh, the guy that does our driveway just can't keep up. So as a result, I have to make a mad dash for the end of the drive and hope for the best. So here we go. Oh, that, yeah, that's pretty much a one-shot deal. If I don't get it the first time, I don't get off the drive. I have gotten stuck, actually. But the biggest issue with this car, when you start to get really bad weather, starts to become clearance before it becomes traction. Very near my house here, there is an empty parking lot. And as we have discussed more than once, when you have an empty parking lot near your house, in the snow, there really is only one thing that should happen. I'm a child. I'm a child. <laughs> Hello, neighbors. How are you? I'm having more fun than you are. That's what I know to be true. <laughs> One of the biggest differences driving rear-wheel drive versus all-wheel drive in conditions like this is correction when it starts sliding. I remember when I had my Sabaru, I could throw it into a corner and then the way to recover was to point where I wanted to go and start easing the throttle in because those front wheels would start to find the right direction. This car is the opposite. Being rear-wheel drive, if I want to get the back out, it's give it more power. The back naturally starts to come out and the correction is coming off the gas and letting the front wheels find grip and the back settle out. Of course, all-wheel drive means more of the wheels are moving and you've got a better chance of finding grip. The other side of it though is it gives people kind of a false sense of security. They just think, well, I have all-wheel drive so whatever tires I've got on, I'll be fine. I, no, not true at all. All right, turning everything off. There we go. That's actually the car equivalent of hold my beer and watch this, is turn all the traction control off, be like, I'll be fine. So this is just a simple corner, a little bit of a hill, too much gas, back comes around. Counter it, easy. Look where you wanna go, it settles. The only time that got bad, honestly, is when I looked where I might go, not where I wanted to go. And as soon as I thought, nope, back where you wanna be, settled it right out. Well, hello SUV. This is actually the upside to an SUV versus a sports car because I am in the line of fire for that SUV's junk that it throws up. If I were in another SUV, it would probably hit the front of my hood, whereas for me, it's gonna hit the dead center of my windshield. Yeah, see my point? Some of you have asked about hills, you've asked about things other than nicely plowed roads, so that's got me coming up here. This is the Olympic Park Road. When they had the Olympics here in 2002, there were a few venues that were up in Park City here, and one of the main ones was the ski jump and the aerials and that kind of thing. They were up here. This is still used as training right now for Olympians from all over the world, because it, there's very few venues that are dedicated to ski jumping. I mean, this road still isn't terrible. You can still find pavement if you want, but it is a hill and uh, it is slick pretty much all the time in the winter. In the summertime, I use this as a kind of a fast blast road. If I just really want to do a quick, fun drive, I'll run up this road because it's a great hill with some tight hairpins. So starting on a hill, I mean, yeah, it cuts loose and then I find it again. What you don't want to do is a lot of abrupt moves. That's the thing I'm avoiding here. You want to ease your way into the throttle. You want to ease your way into steering and braking and everything. The only time you want to do anything aggressive in conditions like this is when you want to get it loose on purpose. Otherwise, if you're gradual, if all of your moves are easy, then you probably won't lose grip. Okay, so now we're going to turn around for fun, which involves a little bit of this. Come on, there she goes, there she goes. Come on back, come on back, there you are. I even looked over my shoulder to check for traffic. That's how that went. 
Now downhill in conditions like this can be scary. One of the key things is downshift. See if you can use some engine braking to keep you from using your normal brakes as much. Keep the car much more consistent in its grip levels and speed. And this is a fairly tight corner. It's a slick corner. I can tell you I'm getting a little bit, a little bit of slide in there, a little bit of understeer. If I had poor tires and a ton of weight, I wouldn't get this back. I, I genuinely wouldn't. It'd be right over in the ditch. But engine braking allows me to be a lot more consistent with what I'm asking for grip-wise. The car stays in a much more steady state. I don't have to surprise it with braking. Because, yeah, even when I ease into the brakes here, that's the thing that's throwing me off the most. So that was hills, sports car, trash control off. It's doable. you got to be smart. And you've got to have good tires. I can't say it enough. I know you're bored of hearing it, but if you haven't gotten winter tires, you need to hear it some more. The best thing about winter tires is having plenty of grip when I need and plenty of slide when I want. You know what has to happen, right? As you've heard on our podcast, The Car Debate, we encourage you to forget the drive wheels and buy the car you really want. We say it all the time, proper tires really are the difference. And we welcome your stories of fun driving in all weather conditions.